Right, you're welcome back. Let's turn attention to another story here. Passion is one of uh, uh, one key factor that drives footballers and not the finance, but with the club takeover by business moguls. Football is now more about how much you're worth and sometimes passion is not in consideration. Now, recently, China has become the new mm. destination for footballers yep. who dream of making it big and retiring as kings mm. and not bothered mm. about writing the names in gold, but in cash. And Nigeria Super Eagles top stars are now on the bandwagon and making it big in China. All right, we'll so take, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll certainly, let's, let's take this report mm -hmm. uh, to lay the foundation to yeah. uh, what we're discussing right now. China's Super League, the new evolution in world club football. Star players swap Europe for the reaches of Asia's emerging football market. A new eastern frontier has opened up for Nigerian players, with a handful of the country's top names heading to China to play in its top flight. After former Inter Milan and Newcastle star Obafemi Martins joined Shanai Shenua in 2016, a number of other seasoned Nigerian internationals have quickly followed suit. There are currently eight registered Nigerian players in the Chinese Super League. So could it be the players are all in the Far East cashing in on the windfall from the Asian giants? The money is very tempting. What's influencing their move to China is because of the money, it's not of the football. The Super Eagles are built to play some other seasoned Nigerian internationals have quickly followed suit. There are currently eight registered Nigerian players in the Chinese Super League. So could it be the players are all in the Far East cashing in on the windfall from the Asian giants? The money is very tempting. What's influencing their move to China is because of the money, it's not of the football. The Super Eagles are built to play South Africa in the 2019 Afghan qualifier and Cameroon in the 2018 World Cup qualifiers. So what impact will the move of the country's top players to China have on the team? It's a worrying trend because before you know it now, we have almost half or 70% of our regular team players in China. I remember when Ole said took over as Eagles coach, the first thing he said was, we're not going to invite players from lower leagues. The reason is obvious. We know the competition is not the same. It's going to be worrisome if we have our starting level coming in from China. But that doesn't seem to worry Super Eagles coach General Rao. When he chooses the money of China, you must respect it. Before the match publicized the movement of players to the Chinese Super League, there have been Nigerian players who have played in the Super League. So how do they fare in the Far East? Benedict Akwebu, the former Super League striker with the then Shenyang Chindan team, went on to play for other Chinese teams, including Tianjin Teda and Guangdil Janun. He was a vital part in Guangdil's attack and notched six goals in 20 games. Gaba Lawal also had a brief stint in China when he turned out for Chan Chan Jindai, which has now metamorphosed into Ganju RNF FC. After an illustrious career across Europe, Victor Ogali played for Jiansu Senti, who made 17 appearances for the CSL side and had an impressive five goals to his name. Peter Otaka, the well travelled forward, qualifies as one of if not the most successful Nigerian that have ever played in China. In January 2012, Utaka moved to Chinese Super League club Dalian Urbin. He scored 20 goals in 28 games in his first season to establish a new C League record. If you still think China's Super League is a second rate league, then think again. The league boasts some of the world's top coaches former Brazil coach Louis Felipe Scolari, former England coach Goran Eriksson. Former Chelsea coach Village Boash, former Manchester City coach Manu Pellegrini, and superstar referee to be added to its name, Mark Klattenberg. The passion and football followership in China is huge. Chinese Super League will be the third most watched football league in the world, only behind the Bundesliga and the Premiership. With more cash, expect more exodus of star players. And it is safe to say, Nigerian players will not be left behind. All right, like some would say, watch out, the Chinese are coming. They're taking over everything. Now sports. That's Not amazing. just football. Not, not, sorry, yeah. not just the economy, not mm -hmm. just uh, uh, technology. technology, but not just the markets, but yeah. now football. Mm. And it's really the, 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 the people's accounts are swaying, <laughs> swelling here and there.
That is really interesting. Yeah, really now, joining us now is the President of Nigeria Pitch Awards, Shina Phillips. Shina, good morning. Good morning. Nice Thanks to see you. Us. My pleasure. Right. Yeah. And we have as well the FIFA licensed player agent, Friday Mwanko. He, uh, Mwanko Kuja. Mm. Uh, he is also the promoter, Kick to Glory. Uh, Friday, good morning. I'm happy to be here. Thank and today you. is Friday. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Shina, let, let's start it this way. Yes. First of all, give us. We're, we are seeing a new trend now. A lot of people, not just Nigerians, even big names in Brazil, yeah. heading mm -hmm. for China. What is that special thing in China? Can you give us that background? Okay, well, uh, what China is doing right now is not anything strange in football, in the in, in, in football world. Dubai tried it, uh, mm. Qatar tried it, uh, but the long, uh, long time effect is what we hope to see. But the Chinese are ex going about uh, a 50 point strategy. It's mm. not just about uh, spending money looking for the big names. What they are doing is basically strategic, aimed at you know, four major points, four, four, four big cutting up points. Mm. One, to improve the domestic league. Secondly, they need international success. Thirdly, they, they, it, it, uh, they, they are concerned about social reform. And then fourthly, uh, 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 they are creating business opportunity for a lot of people out there through football. And the president himself, being a, an avid sport lover, a foot, avid football lover, mm. president, president, the president Xi Jinping, yeah. Yeah, Xi Jinping yeah. you know, actually instructed the vice president with a, a, a few com with a, a group of committee to see to this plan and ensure that China in 2020, by come 2030, will become num the best in Asia, and then come 2050, will be apparently the best in the world. Wow. And so, are putting, they are putting in so much money. You know, the program is geared also towards physical fitness in China. They discovered from a survey carried out, you know, from statistics that 31% of uh, urban residents in China mm. are quite interested in football. And, and so the government, you know, is, is creating that environment, you know, to enable, you know, the environment that will enable businessmen that like the owners of Alibaba and the others mm -hmm. to bring in money and begin to invest in the local league. And at the same time, you know, you know, capture the very best names out there in the world, you know, to encourage followership in China. So it's a well laid out plan. Mm. So it's not just a case of, uh, you know, sports for uh, sports sake. No. It's far more than that. Fact. In fact, it's the, going the, to affect business. It will affect uh, society. Society, it will yes. affect mm. everything. Everything. In fact, the, the plan is that by 2020, there should be about 20,000 training pitches across China that for every 10 every 10,000 Chinese mm. you must you you definitely have to look for a train you have a training set yeah. available for you All for right, fitness let me bring in Friday here yeah. um, there are those who fear that China may just be taking over football globally and the entrance or the incursion of China into football may just spell a doom for 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 football everywhere yeah um, in football First, you talk about skill and um, ability of the player to play. Mm. The image of the player matters. Then um, you're talking about money counts. Um, in China, what China is doing, like China, China say, mm -hmm. they want to create awareness. Not only say they are aiming to be the best uh, country that produces the, the best player in the world or the best national team in the world. Mm -hmm. In their team, each team in China have a factory. And before, oh. before each player arrive, a product will be named, named in the name of the big player. Before making will be arrive China, mm -hmm. don't be surprised that they make a billions of dollars. They know what to use player to make, not mm -hmm. only play in the field. Mm -hmm. People are surprised at the kind of money they are, uh, they, they, they are calling. You understand? But they are talking about how to make money, image, and the country, and mm. telling the whole world, if such a person can be here, then who you, are you? You can exactly, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. to come and do business, to come and stay, live here, and everything. Okay. There are no players have tests. Top players, before you see them, very hard. 
that okay. to make it available to their fans and everything. Mm -hmm. Okay. And um, another one is that. So people moving into China is China. is you know they are endorsing China. They are endorsing, endorsing China, China oh, for yeah. everything they okay. do so, because oh, okay. people see China as a negative uh, something. Mm. Okay. We're producing something that is. Uh, oh, so yeah. that's that's the, the, that on. perception is going to change now. Yeah, yeah. All yeah. right, let's let's put you on hold. Mm -hmm. uh, reports just reaching us saying yeah. that. Uh, uh, the presidential jet has uh, landed, it has touched down in Kaduna mm -hmm. as we speak, yep. and uh, reporters are on ground. Security is very tight around uh, the airport in Kaduna, mm -hmm. and uh, we're getting that report right now. We're certainly going to follow up that to give you updates. Absolutely. Of course, our reporter Tessa Makenda is on ground on uh, in Kaduna, and he'll be giving us all the latest about the president's uh, much awaited arrival remember the president did leave the country january 19 mm. uh, for a holiday of course that was extended a couple of times and uh, many nigerians have been reacting differently uh, based on the the shroudedness that seems to have uh, covered uh, the president's health status uh, that, but thankfully yes. uh, all of that may be laid to rest uh, in the next uh, couple of hours as we get this news about the president's arrival yeah when we spoke with uh, our correspondent earlier on we were asking some question mm. uh, and the concern from reporters and correspondents mm. there uh, talks about the issue of information management yes. there is this uh, confusion as to is he going to land in the kaduna airport or is he going to land at the air force, air force base, base? Mm. and they left in fact he was he was scheduled to land at the kaduna airport mm -hmm. uh, all reporters gathered and then the information came, no, he's not going to land there again. It's of going course, to be Air Force Base to... and they all had to move again. So mm. as it is right now, people are confused as to where he's landed. But mm. a report just reaching us now say he has touched down at the Kaduna yeah. Airport uh, as we speak. But well, certainly we'll get you visuals of that as we get along. Mm. And the reporters are on ground to cover that uh, development so we can let you know. And Nigerians mm. are still uh, expressing uh, concern about how managing proper information. We've had this... Uh, kind of things in the past where Nigerians will certainly like to know so mm -hmm. there should be a way yeah. of uh, beating that so, okay. so we, we, we get things better but let's go on a break and then we come back to dwell more we're talking about uh, China being the new destination mm -hmm. for football and not just business right now stay with us Right, well, welcome back. It's TVC Breakfast. We're looking at China as the new destination for not only Nigerian footballers, mm -hmm. but for footballers World football. everywhere, and in including uh, football managers too. Uh, quite a number of uh, top uh, football managers already in China. Well, some would say that, look, there's no retirement plan for Nigerian footballers anyway. And if <laughs> China is ready to pay the bills, you know, pay them why big money, not why, not? why not? Why <laughs> not? Shino Phillips is President Nigeria Peach Awards and a FIFA agent. He's one of our guests. And Friday, Wankwa Kuja, Kick to Glory. Uh, that's uh, the body he belongs to. And he's also a FIFA licensed uh, player agent. Uh, thanks for remaining with us, gentlemen. Well, Stephen Cash started this exodus in the uh, 80s to Europe. Uh, those days it used to be Belgium, but now it looks like China is, is the new Belgium. Okay, so what's wrong with Nigerian footballers applying their trade in, in China? Take Mikel Obi, for example, who's played with Chelsea for about 10 years. For a long time, he's actually been benched and, uh, you know, his uh, skills getting eroded and some would say look it's better for him to go to china make the money i think 600 and something thousand pounds yeah. a week yeah. ah that's enough money to that's make a you lot want of to money go into yeah, football. Uh, we, we can i'll be your <laughs> trainer i'll be your agent i'll be your manager i'll be your everything too late uh, <laughs> well, first we need to we need to understand the game of uh, this this game of uh, football mm. i mean for any player who is really worth, you know, a nation's pride. You you need to know where the, the exact location to ply your trade mm. at certain point. I mean, you can have the very best of our national team players playing in China. I mean, you expect them to be in the top leagues. The only thing, you know, uh, 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 taking any player down there is the money. 
And if you are really at the top of your game, you will not want to sign any contracts, uh, sign a contract in Dubai or Qatar. Or any of those places. Or any of oh. the places. So we see, you know, uh, when the player is at certain level and he's dropping, you know, his agent begins to negotiate him out to want to sell him to those areas. But for, for a nation, you want the very best of your players to mm. play in the prime league, to play in the most competitive leagues. Okay. Mm. All right, uh, uh, Shino, we'll come back to this. Uh, let's go for the news updates yeah. before we come back to ask uh, Friday Nguanko other questions in here. Stay with us on TVC Breakfast. All right, uh, you're welcome back. Let's quickly uh, bring in Fola uh, yeah. to give us what the people are saying. Fola mm. Dele. Good morning, Good morning. Good morning, morning Mike. Morning. Good morning, Friday. Good morning, Shina. Okay, oh, the football's gone. Yeah, you know, I used football. to be a really good football player. Yeah, I was a really good defender. Oh, great. Back in my tell day. Tell me about oh, wow. it. Yes. <laughs> I'll tell you about it after. Yeah. But let's see what people are telling us about online. Okay. Paul Murphy says, seems footballers are either going to China or Waterford nowadays. LG says, greedy footballers heading to China for that wafer thin mint. Mm. Jerry Walters says, footballers, coaches and now referees quit to make big bucks in China, Saudi or Qatar. I'm also quitting as a gunner to join Al Ain. <laughs> <laughs> Unsigned Act says, an elephant's graveyard where these giant mammals go to die. China, where another kind of mammal, worn-out footballers also go to die. <laughs> CRN says, I can understand footballers going to China for money. First and foremost, it's a career. I don't like it, but I understand it. Bish says, Rooney will have made a bad decision to go to China. Unlike the greedy Africa footballers, China should be the last resort, not the first. And the last one here from James Obunaye says, Now that there is a massive flow of Niger footballers to China, the Super Eagles should henceforth be referred to as Super China. <laughs> <laughs> Friday. Uh. So there seems to be a theory here that, yes. you know, China is where you go when your career, your football career is nearing the end. Yeah, yeah, what do you yeah. think about that? Like pension. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> Do you, what do you think about that? I mean, is that necessarily true? I mean, look at Drogba. He did go to China at some point, if, if my football yeah. knowledge memory yeah, serves me correctly. Yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah. But, I mean, he's still considered a yeah. pretty good player. So, yeah. do you After think that China, applies? China, you just find somewhere to be keeping your feet. Mm. And so, you don't think too, about don't uh, the top playing uh, club again. Mm. Uh, how about you, China? Do you agree well, with I, that theory? I, well, I do not see it just as a retirement uh, camp. Yeah. The truth is, uh, like they express, uh, someone expressed uh, with respect to greed and all of that, mm. you know, these players really want to make money. I, especially for Nigerian players, if you look at even the trend right now, you know, a lot of players want to go out there, not because they love the game, not because they are very passionate about the game. Mm. They yeah. just want to make money. Mm -hmm. And that's why you see that uh, even uh, frosters have come into the business in the name of agents, you know, yes. and are actually defrauding a whole lot of families. Yeah. Yes. And the truth is that way back, we used to have, you know, Nigerians, our, our players used to have very deep interest in football. They were passionate about it. They were not really keen on making money. And that's why the 1994 squad was just yeah, a spectacular yeah. squad. Yeah. You know, and and wow. our Olympic football was fashioned, uh, you know, just in the manner, it, it fashioned our football to look like Brazilian football. So it was a game loved by all, played by all, and the fans were thinking alike. Oh, okay. But these days, it's about the money. Oh. So if you'd see it as a retirement camp, oh. yes. Yeah, you wouldn't be <laughs> okay. correct. Okay. Right, thank, you thank, you, thank you very thank much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Now, Friday, uh, we're almost rounding off, but certainly, let me ask, in this regard, as players are heading to China, yeah. and especially for a country like Nigeria, that we have lost, the, like you mentioned, the squad, the yes. 1994 yeah, yeah. squad that uh, eventually oh, gave us the Olympic uh, 96, uh, 96 Oli yeah. Olympic mm, uh, yeah. medal. And after that, after France 98, we didn't really see anything. It was now we have generally average, average Absolutely. players. Will this? How will this Rub impact off. on our football going forward? Yeah, um, that's why we start invest more on the youth. A, a country like Nigeria that has uh, rode the world under 17 five times. Mm -hmm. No country have ever done that back to back and we don't uh, produce a, a national team from there. So we continue getting it wrong. 
how do you get it right right now? As some are moving to China, as some just like there's a uh, primary one, two, three, four, five. Mm -hmm. We're supposed to have team A, team B, team C, okay. team this. Until you you get don't to wait when level. DJ and others move right. before you go. We have All somebody right. to challenge them, to play more than them, to okay. think about. Uh, we think about that uh, when we have that program, we conquer. And I think uh, we should borrow lead from the Chinese. As we'll I have said. to live it there. All right. no, no, no. <laughs> Being strategic for a long period of time. Yes. I, I understand Absolutely. you. Thank yeah, you very much. Thank uh, you. Friday Nguanko Kuja, thank you for coming on the program now. Thank and uh, Shina Phillips, thank you very much for thank coming. You.